Hello, everybody. This is Craig, and I'm back with part two of this week's critical thinking exercise. And yes, you've reached the Grumpy Cat Love Fest. Yes, I have a fascination with that furry little fellow. Ah, my kids tell me I should stay off Reddit, whatever that means. Okay, um, in part one, in our first video, I showed you how to use Excel to generate frequency distributions. Well, there's another way, and either way works fine, but I'm going to show you the other way to do it just within an Excel. It's, oh, it's not much more difficult. And you're going to have to use Excel for the second part of this critical thinking exercise. So why not? Well, let's dig in. What have I got here? I've got some ratings on how much people love or hate Grumpy Cat. Here's those ratings, uh, starting with the good news. If you rate a six, you love Grumpy Cat. All the way up to number two, you hate Grumpy Cat. And if you go down to a one, whoa, you don't like the little furry fellow. Here's the data I have. It's um, over in these cells. A rating is given. That's the rating. And then also there's a subcategory or what we call a two-way tabulation. If you're a male, you're a one. If you're a female, you're a two. So this first row means it was a female who gave Grumpy Cat a rating of three, which means dislike. Okay, one of the first things we we'll want to do is generate a frequency distribution for this data. And I'm going to do that right in these cells. What I'm going to use is Excel's count if function. So I'm going to I'm going to bring up the function uh, generator. Where is it? Function. Well, how about frequently used? So I could do that, but I'll just type count if up here and there's count if s. There's count if. I'll select that one. And it says I need to give Excel a range of cells and a criteria. Okay, so my range of cells are these. I, I just generated 50 random numbers here. And the criteria I'm looking for is where the, because I was, let's see, let's jump up there. Because I was in the rating one row, I'm doing the criteria of one. And it tell, Excel tells me there's going to be four of them. So that tells me in this entire list, not even looking at male or female yet, we're just looking at the entire list. There were four people who said, Grumpy Cat, burn in hell. All right, now I can just edit this formula. Let's see, I'm going to put um, dollar signs around those things by typing F4 so I can copy that and still have the same range. So I am now going to use what's called autofill to copy those down. And it gave me the same equation in each cell. And now what I want to do is for this row, change my criteria to 2. so on and so forth. I've now edited each of those values. For example, this value right here, using COUNTIF, I have my full range of values, my ratings, and I'm looking for a criteria of six. And Excel tells me there's five of them who did that there. Now I also want a sum here. So I will just say equals sum parenthesis, grab my range, enter. Sure enough, 50 values. I told you there were 50 values. So what do we got? This is both males and females. Let's see, uh, not many people really love Grumpy Cat. Uh, like Grumpy Cat, neutral, dislike, hate, burn in hell. Wow, we got some gnarly people in this group. Okay, let's calculate probabilities. We learned in our 
In the first video, we can do this by simply taking the count and divide it by the total number. So I'll say that divided by that. And I'm going to hit F4 to make those absolute cell references because now I can copy those down like that. Okay, and I have probabilities. Again, this is just like we did in the last video, and I could look at many different things. But now what we want to do is use this second column in this two-way tabulation. I want to split these out these this count of four here and say how many of those four are males and how many are females. Uh, this count of five down here. How many are males or, and how many are females? Well, we can do that using another of Excel's functions. It's called the count if s. I don't know if that's how you say it, but that's how I'm going to say it today. Count if s. And what you do, it looks alike, but it's going to change real quick here. First of all, criteria range 1, I'm going to select my first column values. And let's see, I'm in the row one column, right? Yep, so my criteria is going to be one I'm looking for. But did you see when I clicked in there, I got another criteria range? Yeah, that's where this thing comes in cool. Criteria two range, that's where I put in my second column of values. Now, let's see, what do I want? I am doing... Let's see, the first two boxes tell me about um, that I'm doing the rating and a rating of one. The second one tells me that I'm doing the male-female column and a criteria. I'm in the males here, and let's see, males are one, so I want one for that as well. I hit enter, and it says tells me that one of these four people was a male. Let's double check that equation. Count if s a 13 to 16. I'm gonna I'm hitting F4 to make those uh, absolute values because I want to copy this. Okay, let's autofill it down and then we'll do some edits. Okay, what do we need to edit? This first one was choosing the rating one. Well, are we in the rating one column anymore? I mean row. No, we are not. This second one meant males. Are we still in the male column? Yes, we are. So we are just going to change this to a two. Boom. And I'll do a few more back in a sec. Just like that. So I use the count if s function. Or in this one, I'm in row six. So from my first range of my ratings, I want sixes. And in my second range, the male-female column, I want ones, and ones are males, right? Yep, okay. Everything looks good. Let's sum these up. Uh, yeah, copy that over to here. Okay, probabilities, just like last time. Let's see, can I just take and copy those right here? Let's see. First one says I third. Oh, not wait. I thirteen, which is right next to him. That's correct. Divided by G nineteen. No, it's G nineteen because I had a absolute cell reference there. I don't want G this time. I want I. So I'll just fill in an I there. I thirteen divided by I nineteen, and now I can autofill that. And let's clean her up a little bit. Number. You know, if this is all the probabilities, they should add up to one, shouldn't they? Huh, let's check it out. Let's do sums. Sure enough. Let's do sums. Yep. The probabilities always add up to one. Okay. Make these pretty red. Okay, 
Now we're going to do the same thing over here in the female column. Let's see. Can I just copy this? I'm going to try it. Oopsie. I'm going to copy all of those over here. Whoopsie. I think I moved them. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Hold down control and do that. There we go. All right. Count of females. Let's see. Should be my count if s. And what have I got? Oh, shoot. I went off the screen. There we go. Uh, range is correct. Row one. Yep. I want rating one. And now in the male female column, I don't want ones anymore. Remember, ones are males. I want two for females right here. Yep, that's going to mess things up. Copy that down. Whoa. Yeah, I'm going to have to edit each one, aren't I? Yep. Okay. So I'll make that a two. That uh two make that a two and make that a two. Twenty eight. Hmm. Count of males twenty seven, count of females twenty eight. Doesn't add up to fifty, does it? Tells me I got a problem. Let me check these out again. Let's look at our equations. Two. Two. Uh-oh. Looking good so far. Oh, there's one I forgot. Okay, I think I'm good. Yes! Add the number of males to females, and you get the total. 27 plus 23 is 50. Uh, this doesn't look right. If that's all the probabilities. It should add up to 1. Let's see. K13. Oh, yeah, we got to change this thing again. Over to call or row column K. And now autofill that guy. There, they add up to one. I've now completed all the data I believe I need to do the answer the questions that I've listed at the bottom. Come on out, Grumpy Cat. What have we got? Well, the probability that a male hates Grumpy Cat, where would that be? Well, let's see. Hate Grumpy Cat, it's got to be this row. And Let's see, here's the probabilities for both males and females. This would be the probability of males right there, 0 0.07, or 7%. By the way, I, I made these counts. This includes both male and female, so here's another check. 4 should equal 1 plus 3. It does. This 7 should, 2 plus 5 should make a 7, and 9 plus 3... 12, 2 plus 7, 9, 10 plus 3, 13, and 5 is sure equal to 4 plus 1. All right. Let's see. Probability that a female loves Grumpy Cat. Let's see. Loves Grumpy Cat right there. And female is that value right there, 0.04. Oopsie. 4%. Let's look in general here. What happened? How do people feel about my favorite little grumpy cat? Well, let's see. Love them. Males. Ooh, 15% versus 4% of females. Guys, got a soft spot. In fact, 37% of you like them. Of course, I just made these data up. I have no idea. I had no idea what was going to happen. Neutral. More men. Dislike. Oh, females. Wow. Hate. Yeah, females are still not liking that grumpy cat. 
And the probability that you want Grumpy Cat to burn in hell? Females more than three times likely than males. Okay, again, just made up data. Just having fun. Okay, here's a last question for you, and this is an interesting one. Probability that a male will not be neutral. Hmm. So here's the neutral one. We know the males we're going to be working with, uh, whoopsie, probabilities, those guys there. How do we know we want everything except that one, right? Well, that sounds familiar. Remember in our other video when we had all but one, we just added up all the other numbers? Or we can take one minus that number we learned? Let's do it. Let's add up the numbers. I'm going to start from the bottom. 37, I'd be 47... 52, 53, 63, 70, 74%. I get if I added right. I'm going to write it down before I forget it. 74%. And we learned if there's only one we can take, it's the probability of one minus the probability of male neutral. Okay. One minus the probability of male neutral. There's male neutral. One minus 0.26 is 74%. There we go. Okay. You are going to be able to use what I showed you in my first video this week to do problem one, parts A, B, C. Parts D, E, F, you're going to have to look at uh, the quality data. Uh, and you're going to have to interpret that. It's fairly simple, but you're going to have to think about how you're going to create a um, probability distribution. I'm sorry, frequency distribution and how you will use it. It's pretty simple. In this video, I showed you how to do problem two, the two-way tabulations. And again, you're, uh, you're going to be have to, having to add things up in the certain columns once you split them out by, see, are you doing gender? Yes, you are. Uh-huh. But you'll be looking at uh, how much money people spend at the different malls, so you'll be grabbing different pieces of data and generating some things just like I did. Uh, guys, good luck on this. I am here if you want to phone me. Not many people are, are ringing my bell, although somebody did earlier tonight, and I didn't pick up because I was making this video. Um, good luck. And we'll see you in the boards.